Hey guys, this is my second video of the day. I wanted to show you guys these yarns in better light so you could really get to see how beautiful they actually are. This one is turning into this. So this is very nice yarn. It turns out I love working with it. This is the perfect thickness for me and to make these hats and uh, the colors are gorgeous. And even though I was sort of like, oh, it's not soft enough, they're, they're soft enough. They are soft enough. They're nice to work with. Look at these gorgeous colors. This is, I love multicolored things and two-tone. Um, so I'm just gonna show you some of them. This is the purple one. Isn't that pretty? I'm so excited about these. Honestly, I really am. The blue, this beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm so excited about these. This is like fun. It's like Christmas. It's absolutely Christmas. Gorgeous. I love this. These more are a little bit earthier, earthy tones. These are the very the bright baby blue, pretty colors. And um, what else? This one. There's so many. This is pretty. This is really nice, see? It's got the dark gray in it. This is gonna be interesting. I'm curious about how this is gonna turn out. Um, these I didn't open up at all. But, and mom's eating one of my, ooh, look at this one. Ooh, 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 I like these. This is nice. I'm actually excited about these. I'm very, very happy about this purchase. Um, yes, very good. Very happy about this. Oh, I love this. I love this one. Isn't that so pretty? This, this is so gorgeous. I, see, this excites me. I get excited about it. I like to touch these things and make... My dad was really into us having a craft or a skill and um, so that we could make a living. You know, that, that was his biggest message. Harsh as he was... As far as a father, he was very, you know, Spartan. It was like, you know, he would, do you remember when he, um, when he had all the older three kids go out into the snow and walk in, walk barefoot in the snow to test to see how strong they were? Do you remember that? You don't remember that? Think back. I know you were, it's in there. Anyway. He made you walk naked. Not. No, not naked, barefoot. Barefoot. <laughs> Poor mom. She was in love with him, but he, because he had special, he was a special man. He had these big, light blue eyes, the really light blue eyes. Your eyes are green. <sighs> anyway, he was a very unique and special person. He was also a very hard father to have because he was extremely judgmental. You you know, he, you had to be amazing all the time. You had to be perfectly fit and have, you know, muscle. And he was always squeezing you to see if you had any fat on you and to see if you were muscular enough. Like a Spartan. He had the Spartan mentality. You know, that Anunnaki Spartan Greek, Roman, how strong are you mentality? And they used to leave, the, you know what they used to do is they used to leave their babies on top of the mountain. And if they survived the night, then they'd keep them. If they died, they were too weak anyway. They didn't want them. They only wanted strong soldiers, people. They only wanted their tribe to have the top, most strong people. They did not care. That's a very reptilian mentality to only want good uh, top people in your tribe and and if you were weak they did not want you they that you were left on the mountain to die let them feed the animals you you were you were food for the wolves or whatever got to you first the lions or whatever um and my father who i think we come from that spartan anunnaki type you know warlike white person tribe not not all of me is that way but you know we have that genetics um, that he, you know, he, he, he didn't do this to me, but he made my mother agree to, um, or maybe he just did it cause he was the king, of course, agree to, um, the older three children had to walk outside in the snow barefoot 
not naked, but I don't think they were naked. I think they were just barefoot because he wanted to, you know, and she said that they all got colds after that. <laughs> crazy huh so my dad was crazy everybody was crazy. everybody is on planet crazy everybody's crazy i think i believe that this planet is where we all experience the crazy version of ourselves that's what i believe i swear but this is a prison planet that's a known fact in the universe and it's a um crazy house it's it's where all the mentally ill souls it's where all the tort, the damaged souls come to work it out. Good place to work it out, isn't it? In a way, if you think about it, it's a good, it's a tough school. Tough. It's also considered a school. Uh, a high, a high. The Earth is also considered like the you know graduate school or the PhD yeah. of education. Yeah, and being in a human body, which is very challenging, because you're you're automatically self-loathing. Why? Because you're made humans, this version of humans, which is a specific version of humans that can procreate. We are, we have a reptilian brain at the base of our spine, at the base of the back of the neck, the reptile brain. It's also the amygdala, amygdala connected to the amygdala, which is these two sort of pieces, right? The organs right here, these small there's something to do with the fight or flight and that's the reptilian side of us the part of us that fights to defend ourselves but that also has that warlike nature but the and then that's part of our makeup and then the other part is human warm-blooded so there's cold-blooded reptile and warm-blooded human in one he body which was wow. i believe designed on purpose okay. now, there's different reasons for that happening one one story i was told was that to make the game fair, the reptiles wanted a little reptilian blood in the humans so they could control them. It's, it's like a game, but it's also a testing ground, and it's also a, Earth is also a, a laboratory and a science experiment and a, an experiment, and we are obviously the lab rats, right? right? And that's why we have hospitals and laboratories. You know, I mean, there's a higher reason for all these things, you know, M mom's energy, I think is really about doing the right things, which is connecting with the earth, gardening, growing vegetables. You know what I mean? The way, the way out of the madness is the simple, the simple, healthy things, growing your own vegetables, making beauty, enjoying life. You're supposed to enjoy, you know, staying connected to the earth. I mean, this this world's very complicated. We have these computers. You know, this one guy I was, was listening to this morning, because I get up at the crack, I get up, I'm up at four. Today I was up at, I looked at the clock, it was 4.44 a.m. Um, but I was up even sooner than that. And I, you know, I was watching a video. Now I was watching, I gotta show you this guy. Where is this guy? Oh, uh, oh, here it is. It's called A Hard Look at Artificial Intelligence. It's by this guy named Minnie Van Jack. He's a, you know, white, middle-aged, older white guy. Um, Jerry Day? He, he, he left a message on, he left, he, he left a message on one of my videos about Max. And he wrote something like, who is this guy? Why does he tell you to investigate? Doesn't he know who his murderer is? What, what is this game he's playing? I, I, I didn't, his comment was weird. So I was like, well, who is this guy? So I checked him out. He looks like a legitimate guy who does videos. Um, all the kind of stuff I like secrets of the slave state, pointing out artificial intelligence. Um, he makes all these videos about, um, exposing the truth, the dark, evil, horrible truth of this world, which is it's run by uh, an, an evil cabal. It, it's run by an evil group of people that ens have enslaved humans by making it seem like they're not enslaved, but they are enslaved. It's a slave planet. It's very easy to see that, honestly, once you, you're slave to the job, to pay the bills, to pay the taxes, or you go to jail. I mean, it's a, this is a very violently based system, wow. very punishment based. Wow. Yeah. You, you wake up, you, you're born, and you're slapped 
with a, a code, a barcode called the, your social security number. You get a number so the government can track you. It's, it's, it's like your barcode, you know? You get that when you're born? You get a social security number when you're born. Really? Right? Wow. You, you know yeah. that. Yeah. Keep it right. Yeah, you know that. You have a social security number and so do all your children. Every single one of us gets a social security number. We just assume that's normal. But what's the real reason for it? Everybody gets a number? Oh, goody, I have a number so that you can sell me with my number. They know exactly what my, you know what I mean? Like, what's the real reason for the number? What is the real reason? Well, maybe it's the barcode so we can be sold. Because I found, you know how we, you know how we, you know how we farm cows and pigs and chickens. Yeah. We have farms, and we kill the cow and chop it up into pieces and package it up and put it at the supermarket, right? Yeah. Well, humans are also valuable body part products. Humans. Yeah. Yeah, and we are sold on the open market intergalactically between planets apparently humans are designed to be slaves a slave race that are then sold to other planets to be slaves on other planets i mean some of these people you listen to these videos they make they paint these portraits of what life is in like in the gal the a greater galaxy not just this little planet that this little planet is the last planet to take over of all these planets which are, which are enslaved and are slave planets where humans or, you know, humans make the best slaves. Cows are good for eating, but hu humans are good for eating and doing work and hard labor and labor. Handiwork. You can get humans to make your costumes with their little hands. Our five magic or ten magic wands. And humans can do things. It's better to hire a human as your slave than a monkey. <laughs> Why? Because humans can do more things than monkeys, and we're more obedient, yeah. aren't we? Do we we're not go to obedient. yeah? We're pretty obedient, don't we? Go to school and do everything we're supposed to do, and then the few rebels have to go on drugs. The rebels to society are called, um, you know, deviant. They're called autistic or rebellious and they need to be medicated because they're not fitting into the little program. Interesting, isn't it? But yes, I believe that we are a slave race. And you know, when you hear these guys talking about it, it does sound like fear porn because they talk about how humans are trained and raised and programmed to be high quality slaves, although humans are very messed up. We make a lot of mistakes, but a good human that does it is a very obedient human that's capable of, you know, making things like beautiful colored yarn and blanket, whatever you need, whatever you want the slaves to do. You know, human beings are, were actually, originally we were designed to be a slave race or were we? I mean, what are we designed for? These, these, this, this, okay. Eleven dollars, and this was these were really inexpensive. These were like five dollars. Wow. wow. And really similar, you know. Obviously, I love the multicolor rainbow. They're very similar, but this one is, you know. $11? This was eleven dollars. I, I way overpaid. Like I wouldn't have, you know, paid eleven if I saw this in the store. If I saw these two in the store, and I picked them up. And I, I like to buy things that I touch and feel because internet, you, you might get something you don't like. And I hate returning things. I hate dealing with it. I don't like to have to go to the post office and stand in line and then ship it back and then hope the company will take it knowing they're going to look for excuses not to take it back. Not all companies, but some companies. Some, some are good. Some are bad. It's just a hassle. So I don't, and they probably know you're not going to do it. So I mean, a few people return things, but it's, it's more work. It's more time. It's more energy. It's like, I have to go now. I have to return this. I'd rather just not have bought it in the first place. And I, I, it's easier for me to choose what I really want by physically holding it. That's why I like to go 
to the store. I'd rather take my time to go to the store and buy what I really want because I touched it and felt it with my own hands and my own eyes than hope it's okay, pick it up in the, and then have to return it if I don't like it or have to deal with it if I don't like it. So now I have this gorgeous yarn, which is very soft a little bit softer than this, but this is still super nice. There's no getting around it. This, these are going to be great. These will be great hats. I'm very excited about these hats. You know, they're nice hats. It's, I mean, but this is so thin that it's going to take me forever to get through making a hat. So I, I know that I probably, this will take me a long time. I'll work on this a little bit. Then I'll go back to this. Then I'll, I'll go back to this a little bit because it just takes too long. I, I have a lot. I have other hats that are sitting around unfinished because they're so thin. I just I just don't want to take the time. This is more quick. I'm impatient. So it's like, I want to get more quick results, I guess. I'm not as patient as I should be. That's not a, one of my strengths. Patience is something I'm working on. <laughs> but this is so pretty. Like, I want to, I want to use this. this. You know what? This would be nice for wristies. This would be nice for the wristies because it's thinner. So the, you you could do some beautiful wristies, but it would take a long time. If I could get a machine to make the wristies, that would be good. Uh, because this is very beautiful. I love this yarn. I mean, you know, this is pretty. This is this is nice. This would go with something nice. This would be a nice accent piece for your, you know. This could be, I could make the hat and this would be the matching wristie. I could do that. Because this is a little thick for wristies, but not... Not really, just a little bit. It's fine. This is really great yarn. So anyways, um, yeah, that's what I was talking about. So anything else? It's pretty sad about the humans being slaved, enslaved. So I'm like, what do we do about this? Well, all of these people who say this, that humans are enslaved and we have to stop AI from taking over the planet. How do we do this? Because AI is artificial AI? artificial intelligence, oh. which is basically the computers and these programs and the phones and anything, right. the TVs, all that's artificial intelligence. Right. Now they're saying that artificial intelligence, also these, these fake humans, they make cloned humans. They make robots that look like humans that help you around the house. I would not want that personally. I would rather hire a normal hu human to help me out I'd rather be with a normal human. I don't, I mean, yes, we well, men might want to have one of these fake sex slaves. Oh, now, then I heard that they were making these plastic women that seem real as obedient sex slaves for men. Oh, wow. And then another reason that they're doing that is to stop men from, pro, pro, from procreating because their sperm is going into a, a, a rubber vessel, not a real human that to decrease the population. They want to decrease the population. That's what some people say. But why would you want to decrease your farm? Because humans are farmed. Get it? Right. It's hard for us to break into this thinking. But my view is that, first of all, you've got... You had 100,000 people, then 200,000, a million people, then 8 million people, then 10 million, then a billion, then 2 billion, 3 billion. Now they say you have 7 billion people on the planet. That's a lot of eggs. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of eggs. Right? So it, that's more money. More eggs, more money. So why would you decrease? It's like... Oh, I have a chicken farm with a million chickens. They produce two million eggs. Why would you take away some of your egg production if that was the way you made your living? Right. So th when they say they want to decrease the population, I find that hard to believe. I agree. Because why would you decrease your farm yeah. production, yeah. right? You, you, you're more, it, it makes more sense. If, you, if you're really in the business of human trafficking which is selling body parts and humans yes. secretly. Um, if you're in that business, why would you want to take down your options by reducing your, your, your humans that you can then secretly kill and sell, traumatize, create the hormone in the brain 
when a human is traumatized or terrorized, it produces this reaction, this, this chemical in the brain, the hormones, the, the, um, the, um, huh, pituitary gland, the pineal, all the glands, the adrenals, the, the, that, the endocrine system, the endocrine, the endocrine system in a human being responds to trauma, terrorizing, rape, violence, you know, um, with, by producing a hormone. It reacts by producing a hormone. That's why the, these movie theaters that do scary movies and everybody's watch all the humans, all the sheeple are watching this scary movie in a big, in a dark room with a big screen. So it looks really real. So if it's scary and all the humans have a scared reaction to a sudden thing in the movie, all these humans produce that same chemical hormone at the same time in the movie theater. And then the movie theater is designed to capture that louche. They call it louche. So all movie theaters, as well as all sports stadiums, are built, and so are churches, built with sacred geometry in mind, using sacred geometry, that's why the domes are at the top of these buildings, domes mm -hmm. with the spy, spires, yep. because that collects the human louche, mm -hmm. which we think isn't a thing. We feel it, but we don't see it, except for the pain in our faces, so we don't think it's an actual source of anything, an energy source, but it's actually energy. Human emotions produce something that is collectible and usable, like a battery. We're also wow. batteries. Wow. We're everything. They rely on us. They can't do anything without humans. That's why I don't believe they really want to reduce the population. I think they're more likely to take humans and send them to other planets for slaves. That, that I believe, which is a horrible thing. Oh, my shoulders are getting all tense. You know, I used to get really tense shoulders when I would sit in front of the computer for too long. And that hasn't happened to me. And now that I think about it, now that I have this pain in my shoulders, I realize I, that hasn't happened in, in years or a long time. I used to get, I used to like sit in front of my computer, you know, doing, being obsessed, doing my work on the computer, whatever I'm doing. And then I would have this incredible pain in my shoulders and I would have to get up and I would have to do something about it. And I just feel that right now, but I, two, two, four twos. I just saw four twos, four wow. twos in a row. Wow. Hi, Max. That's Maxwell's. Spears is um, special number. Yeah, that's special that's number. his. That's when I see three, right. two, three, or four twos in a row. I assume that he's oh, wow. he died, but I think he's still alive somehow. Wow. You don't die. Wow. He's too much too, too powerful to actually die. Wow. But people try to. Oh, the other thing they do is try to ransom not only your body but your soul. Oh. Uh, wow. Yeah, it is horrible, and it's evil and demonic. So this one guy that I was listening to was talking about. How AI, artificial intelligence, it, what what the big fear was that it is that it gets its own consciousness. It, it thinks it, it's like an, a robot that becomes real. A robot that be has, it's almost like a robot that behaves as if it has its own soul. And this, they they all these guys that are that know about stuff that are in the military, that have been part of these experiments, that have been part of the military, the secret space program, all the secret stuff that all these governments have done, that humans, regular humans, the sheeple don't know about. But AI is something that was created that seeks to take over the planet and seeks to destroy every human. Well, you need a lot of humans. Why would they want to destroy every human? It's, a, it's an artificial intelligence program. Oh. See, it's a program that it's on. It just... It's a crazy program that we either we created or somebody created it almost maybe by that. It's like, it's like anti-love or anti-light. It's the opposite of love. It's the opposite of light. It's, it's a destructive energy that kills everything, including organic things. It's a fake thing that, that tries to mimic organic real things and then destroy them. I know it's like a big nightmare, right? But Earth is supposed to be the firewall where AI is, is back down and changes. Supposedly, we are here to stop this programming, which sounds like it's impossible to stop. These 42 children, anybody in the conspiracy world would know the, about the 42 children. There are these 42 children that were born in the 70s that are supposed to be the ones that stop AI. But I think that we can all stop AI. I don't know. I don't know. It's... it's, it's 
Yeah. Wow. It's scary stuff. That, that, that we, I'm going to yeah, pretend. Scary. Yeah, it's scary. I'm going to pretend there's a solution to this. And the solution, and they all say the same thing. Eat good food as if you can find good food on this planet because everything is poisoned, right? But we do have one thing going for us, and that's our thoughts. We, we can control our thoughts, yeah. even though they try to control our thoughts with television, newspapers. By the way, news, 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 new, news, new, Anu. Anu newspapers, newspapers, new. Newspapers are covered with ink, color, and black. And it gets all over your hands. And it's toxic. So, you know, we, we, we like to read newspapers, but we end up getting poisoned when we do that. We don't know it. But, and money also has ink on it. It's, I think that's dirty money. It's dirty. It's the ink is, the ink is bad for you. So I'm glad I don't have to read the newspaper, but when I do pick up a newspaper, I immediately feel like I have to wash my hands and I almost wish I hadn't touched it because I can tell it's bad for me, you know, and we, people used to rely on the newspaper to get their news before right. we had television. We had the printing press. Right. Where did that come from? You know, I always wonder where these things come from out of the blue. Like, for example, in the Renaissance, suddenly, out of the blue, there were violins, these complicated music, complicated instruments, right. violins, cellos, horns, right. drums, right. oboes, right. pianos, right. harpsichords, bells and whistles and things to make noise and things to make these elaborate musical scores suddenly out of the blue humans are producing these incredibly gorgeous and amazing instruments musical instruments out of the blue where did they come from where did they get the ideas to make a, a, a you know a clarinet good question yeah suddenly people know how to make musical instruments? Like, really? You know, did we get the divine inspiration from the g -g 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 gods? Where, where did these ideas come from? Suddenly we have these elaborate orchestras. You know what I mean? It's like one second, there's nothing like that. And then, then all we have are human voices and some drums and some bells maybe. And then, and then suddenly there's these wooden, beautiful, curved, carved instruments, that a violin that you put on your shoulder and go like this. And then there's a, oh, there's a bow with thousands of little tiny thin strings that create the strings of the bow that you, that you go on strings that you, that you know how to play and they would become experts at it. And then they make these beautiful, gorgeous orchestras and music, Baroque music that is divine in a way, in a way, right? And then you're like, where did all that come from? You know? I think that's a really good question. Where did all these musical instruments out come from? Suddenly, they're there. When they weren't there. They didn't have, did they have violins during Jesus' time? I don't know. Did they have violins during Solomon's time? I have to ask Solomon, I have to ask Simon that. I know. Did they have any of that during Egyptian times? What'd they do for music? They had the piccolo. And I think they had guitars. But where'd they even get the idea for a guitar? Who thought of it? All of a sudden, somebody just thought of making a guitar with a, out of wood, carved and beautiful and thin and careful and amazing? How did you even... Who would even think of it out of the blue, you know? So, yeah... Yeah. Yeah, not only did they conceive of them, but they built them yeah. perfectly. Complicated musical instruments. Some are made of wood and strings and a little bit of metal, brass, and then you've got these wind instruments that you blow into, and then you have things that you just play with your hands, and then you have things that you go with a bow, and then the drums and then different kinds of drums and all these different kinds of wind instruments suddenly well, didn't come overnight. Yeah, how did they what's the story there? 
I mean, I could look it up, the history of these these things, but but when you think about it, and then oh, suddenly there were these amazing artisans that could build these instruments. They hammered them out of gold or brass. How would they even know what to do? It's really interesting. When you think about the 1500s, the 1600s, and the 1700s, is really they got they really got their hands on gold in the 1700s. Louis the 50, 14, 15, 6, all those Louis of France with all their, with their, you know, their giant, um, uh, what's that place called where Marie Antoinette in Vienna or what's it called? Oh, I hate it when I can't think of things. Um, the big palace or Boy. what was the name of that palace? Yeah. Sorry guys. Sorry when I'm stupid like that. I really hate it, but I, I see other people doing it too. They're making videos and they're trying to think of something. They just can't think of what it's called. It's so annoying. <laughs> but you know what I mean? The big fancy castle in France that everybody goes to and visits where Marie Antoinette was before they raided it and then turned it into a museum. because She was living there in all her fancy glory while the rest of her country was starving. And I don't know if she didn't know about it. But the way they lived back then, where they would the, the royalty would have everything and pamper the royalty, and then everybody else would starve. You know? Wow. This world has been so fucked up. And by the way, swearing breaks the matrix, so don't be afraid to swear. Oh, that's another thing my mother did. She came she was born swearing. <laughs> God. Both of my parents did nothing but swear. <laughs> now, where would my mother, born in 1932, even learn swears? She came from two educated people. Her father was from Virginia. Were they saying fucking shit all the time? No. <laughs> oh, God. You know? But you you were swearing on the playground at age 12. I don't know who told me that, but I heard that. And they didn't know where it came from. But it's, I think it's because she instinctively knew that swearing, she didn't know consciously, but she would swear all the time. And both of my parents did. In fact, it used to be an embarrassment to me. I was terrified that our family swore so much that I was afraid to bring people over. <laughs> I was terrified that you would swear in front of them and I would be mortified because none of my friends swore. And then I would have to control myself on the, on the, it was something I literally, you, at home, everybody swore so much that it was in my head all the time that I was afraid that I was going to swear on the playground. And one time I did, it slipped out on the playground at school. And my good goody two-shoes friends were shocked. And I, and I had to constantly make sure I didn't swear on the playground when everybody was swearing at home all the time, screaming at each other, you fucking brat, nah! you know? And we were horrible. And we, and you swore, dad swore, oh my older God. brother, nothing but fuck shit, fuck shit, fucking shit, fucking shit, all the time, all the time. I like being around people who swear because I hate having to control it. Because swear words are fun. They are. But I used to be mortified if it would pop out of my mouth. And I, I, I you know, and then... <laughs> You know, I think it was my first husband was like, you better stop swearing. You're going to get caught. <laughs> he was like, you're going to get in trouble if you don't stop swearing all the time because you're going to be around like the queen of England, like real people. Oh, and then you're, and... Oh, what did you do to your children, mother? Mother, what did you do to your children? What did I do to them? You saved us all. Because swearing breaks down the matrix. So what you were really doing was breaking down the matrix. And you should be proud of all your swearing. I just didn't realize at the time that swearing was good for us. I thought it was bad. So I thought that, you know, uh, but I figured it out that swearing breaks down the matrix because it makes people smile. What? Yeah. <laughs> when you say, fucking fuck. <laughs> See? Look. <laughs> See? Everybody's laughing. Yeah. <laughs> fucking fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fucking fucking fucker. It makes people laugh. The, and laughing breaks down the matrix. That's why swearing, which makes people laugh, breaks down the matrix. Because when you're smiling and laughing, you you are you you raise your vibration. 
and then you see a little more clearly when you're not being when you're laughing you're up when you're crying you're miserable you're down when you swear it makes you laugh it brings you up so then you're up and you're less controllable when you're happy you're less controllable you know when you're when you're down and miserable that's how they keep you under control and when you're down and miserable you're praying to somebody to help you that's when you give your power away so they they keep they do everything they can to program us using subtle techniques to keep us down and miserable and depressed so that they we're praying for help so that we take a pill to fix how bad we feel it's a clever trick we've been tricked 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 and duped and uh, what's the word hoodwinked yes we've been hoodwinked <laughs> that's horrible <laughs> Mom, what do you think about the fact that we've been hoodwinked all these years? Hoodwinked, that's amazing. Yeah. So, I think RH negative blood people are less light. Well, we can be hoodwinked, but then we figure it out that we're being hoodwinked. We're harder to trick. My mom never fell for buying Wonder Bread. You never bought Wonder Bread, Mother. I don't think you ever brought, bought Wonder Bread. Did you? No, she didn't. Why didn't you buy Wonder Bread? How did you know that? <laughs> she instinctively knew. How did you know that Wonder Bread was bad? She did know. Probably because I knew what was in it. How did you know what was in Wonder Bread? I, I, I don't know. Did you read the ingredients? I guess so. I, I think she read the label. She read the label, <laughs> as we all should. And then don't buy the stuff that has crap in it. And that leaves very little on the shelves that you can buy, but you're just going to have to buy that. And you can buy, you can do it. I mean, also, if you are toxic and poisoned, which we all are, um, I do think if you distill your water by leaving it in the sun, somehow the sun heals the water, and then you can drink that water that's been healed by the sun, and that helps to flush out your body from the toxins. And also, our body is made of mostly water, and water is affected by our thoughts and our feelings. So if you keep your thoughts clear and good, you know, if you if you're stressing out and you and you and you and you find yourself spinning and your neuroses takes over, neurotically repeating the same negative thought over and over and over and over again, just make the thought positive. You can't change the neuroses maybe, but you can change the th the words. So it's like I used to be terrified about money and about what uh, you know, survival. So when I would start to spin anxiously, neg worrying about money and how I was going to survive, I would say, I have all the money I, I need and want. I have all the money I want and need. I have all the money I need and want. I have all the money I want and need. Everything will be okay. Everything will be okay. And I would say that. So I would just force myself to go, I have everything I need and want. I have everything I want and need. All, you know, whatever. Something positive, as opposed to what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? I'm never going to. I'm never going to. I'll always be blah, 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 negative, negative, negative. So you can just switch the thinking to a positive thinking. That's one way to deal with neurotic, crazy, repetitive, negative thinking. Nothing yeah, and I think it worked. I think it really helped me. I would just, if I started to feel anxious and I was going to like lay down to go to sleep. And I was like, uh, I'm spinning negatively. I'm thinking negative thoughts. I would just force myself to find a phrase that comforted me. And I would just repeat that phrase over and over and over till I fell asleep. Wow. And I do think it works wow. because, what? well, be, because I think it helps you have the life that you want by forcing it. Cause your thought, your life responds to your thoughts. Right. So if you force yourself to think thoughts that create the life you want, it will work. That's what you have to do though. So that's what I think. And um, that was another thing I was thinking about telling everybody today on my channel was, and I've said this before, but how to deal with repetitive negative thinking. Just keep the, keep the repetitive thinking, but just make it positive. And then spin it, but then you're spinning up. And instead of spinning down into a downward vortex, you're spinning up. You're still spinning, but you're spinning up, you know? All is well. I'm healthy, safe, and sound on this planet. I'm always safe and I'm healthy, safe, and sound on this planet. Or I'm healthy and safe on this planet. I have all the money I need and want. I have all the money. And now I like to get away from money 
But while I was still caught into this money thing, I, that was my those that was my wording. I have all the money I need and want. I have all the money I want and need. I have everything on this planet I need and want. I have everything on this planet I want and need. Whatever you want to say, you can say your own phrase, but don't use negative. Don't say, I never am poor. Don't say that because then supposedly the universe only responds. It doesn't take the negatives. It will, it will say, you say, I am never poor. It will be, I am poor. So you don't want to say that. You want to say, I have, I have all the abundance I need. I am wealthy. I am rich or I am, you know, um, you know. Everything I need and want comes to me abundantly. Everything I want and need comes to me in abundance. And just blah, blah, say that over and over and over again. I mean, that's what I used to do. With That's how I used to handle my fears. And I do think it helps. Big kiss, guys. Talk to you soon. Love ya.